this is Mary from SVG Cuts and I'm here today with five brand new box cards for fall. So I love designing and making box cards because they're really fairly simple to put together, especially if you're in the mood to be crafty. It's a lot of fun to make. It's also a lot of fun to give and to see somebody when they open it up and receive it, how they're so impressed and wowed with it. And chances are they will leave it out as part of their decor for the season. And it's just a whole lot of fun. So I came up with some fun designs this time. I, I have a nice, really super simple one that can work for any season, not just fall. You can make it in a, a super snappy snap. And I have noticed that a lot of paper companies have designs like this in their paper collections. So it's easy to just cut it apart and put it inside something like this. We also have a couple other projects that use that size of design if that's something that you're interested in. I'll link it below. And I also, of course, wanted to come up with some more fun, detailed cards as well, such as the cute little scarecrow. I think he's really cute and festive and adorable. He's gonna bring a smile to someone's face. If you, you know, make it and give it to someone and they'll definitely put it out with their, their decor or just around to, to bring them joy during the season, I think, which is fun. And um, I also came up with three more. So of course, a big full-size pumpkin box card. We have some other pumpkin-themed box cards that feature a bunch of little pumpkins on them, but this one obviously is just one. So I'm really happy with the way that it came out. I think it's really pretty and festive. And I think someone even mentioned on Facebook that this, this would make a nice place card for Thanksgiving or fall. If you were of a mind to create amazing place cards, you could certainly do that. Really, any of these would work for that, especially this, since it's so slim, it would fit on a table setting, I think. I also came up with a fun pumpkin pie box card, and obviously it doesn't just have four sides. It's kind of a different, a different look to it. Um, and the cool thing about the box cards is how they fold flat to go inside their envelope. So when they come out, they look really dimensional and cool. So sometimes it's hard to believe that it fits in an envelope, but it does and it's easy peasy. So I also have this one too, which is just a very natural take on some elements of fall, some pretty maple leaves and some seed pods, helicopters, what have you on the inside. I also think that one's really cool. So I have all my pieces cut out to show you how each card goes together step by step. So let's get started. So first of all, for the frame box card, I have all the pieces here. I kind of laid them out on top of where they're gonna be going. I've got the side, the back panels, and the front panels, this interior one, the label, the interior panels, and the envelope, which you can see in the PDF menu document that comes with your download, which I usually print out to show you guys, but I also, usually talk about how you can look at it on a tablet too. So I went ahead and dropped it onto my iPad and you can open it with the books app, which is what I did. Um, depending on your tablet and your setup and all that, it could be a little bit different. So if you're comfortable doing that, then great. Um, so the PDF, however it is that you look at it, it shows you the same helpful, hopefully helpful information mainly the shapes that you're you're going to be cutting out and what they're called and it also shows you the type of paper that I used in the sample that you see just in case you're curious and you want to use the same paper or if you want to change it up it makes it helpful so you can see these panels one here diagonal plaid patterned I pretty much used the same for this second example here panels two that's here and here the card base is two pieces, which is underneath these panels. This middle part I cut by hand. It's a three by four rectangle, and I just chop chopped it on my paper slicer guillotine that I have. Or you could use scissors or some kind of straight edge cutting tool. But it's also included in the extras folder if you want your machine to cut that out. Then I have some interior panels because this card has some panels on the inside of it 
also, not in the front inside, just the sides and the back. Kind of brightens up the inside and really makes it pop, pop in there. And then the envelope, which I have here, you can see there. So for each project, you can see all of those shapes, depending on what you're working on. So, you know, if you want to save some paper and you feel comfortable being organized with that, that's always an option instead of printing. I actually ran out of ink when I was trying to print it and I thought, you know what, maybe it's better that I don't. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you want to apply some ink to the edges of these shapes, you can. I'm gonna skip it now, but that's what I did on this. I rubbed, before I glued them down, I rubbed some ink around the edges using some old ink pads that I have. Um, you can do that with ink pads um, or ink in a dauber, which looks like this. You can get these, they come blank. Mine have ink on them from using them, but you can dab it on an ink pad such as this. If I was to rub this directly on the edge of my shape, it would be way too harsh and thick. You can blend it in with this a little bit, or you can dab that there. I still have a little bit too much on my dauber here, but I, that's way more than I would really like to have on there. I'm still getting the hang of it because I used to use different ink pads that are discontinued. So I think in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is if you like this technique and you want to do it, here's one way to do it with stuff that's available now, because the way that I was doing it for a long time with the color box ink pads is no longer possible because they're discontinued. So this is not discontinued. These are just plain old daubers. I forget the brand name. And then this is Catherine Pooler ink. And if you wanna just start small, I think brown is usually a good go-to, especially with the holidays coming up. I used to only use brown on my edge inking. So if you wanted to get yourself some ink and some daubers, um, that would be a good start is just by getting just the brown. I don't think you have to get a whole set with a million different colors because it gets a little, it, gets, it seems like it gets a little addicting and it's not super cheap. Um, so I don't want to get you all jazzed up about something that's a little pricey. Some of the inks can be a little pricey. So if you want to just check it out and see how you like it, I would suggest starting with just a brown ink pad dark brown, medium brown, whatever. And it's pretty universal. I feel like you could edge, ink the edges of just about anything with a brown and it's gonna look pretty cool. You could go lightly for a subtle effect. Or you could go heavier for more of a grungy effect, more of a vintage effect. But either way, I think it does add a really nice touch because it sort of seals the edges off and makes it look just more finished and more interesting and more special, I think. So in the interest of time, I don't think I'm gonna ink the edges of all my shapes because I, I wanna get this new SVG kit out there for you guys to make. And that would make it take a little bit longer and time is not always on my side lately with my toddler in my life, which I'm not complaining about, but I have to be a little selective about my priorities, I guess. So inking, inking, it's hard not to prioritize inking because I love it. Okay, so easy peasy, I'm gonna glue the, the outside panels on these shapes here. Just like this. And 
just like this. So back to this, I had said that I cut it out of a piece of paper. So this is the sheet of paper that came with my paper collection, which is Fall Fever by Echo Park Paper Company. I feel like a lot of different paper companies' designs include a sheet like this that has three by four squares on it. And it makes for um, some fun, easy, cute designs, as you can see. You can cut them apart manually, which is what I did here, as well as here. And I like to make super quick and simple designs that you can use these with, because I see them so often and they're always so cute. So if you wanted to make, you know, quite a few of these cute cards, you could even add some stuff like pumpkin shaped button or, you know, you're, you're creative if you're watching this, I'm guessing. So... Hopefully that's fun for you. And of course it doesn't have to be autumn themed. It could be any theme. So next I will glue these on and stamp on that piece. So the stamps that came with my paper collection are super cute. And I'm gonna pick one and stamp it on here. Probably just use what's already here. As you can see, I am not a stamp block washer offer. I kinda just, just let it ride. So, true confessions. Very cute, love it, love it, glue it on. Simple, lovely, enough room to sign your name or whatever. And then I will glue this on here. So it's a little hard to judge exactly where to put it. So I'm gonna take my best guess and then I'm gonna fold it sharply over and move it over if I need to so that it is properly positioned. So there's the whole outside of the card and now I can glue this interior piece into place, which is gonna help me see exactly where to put my little element rectangle. And put this in. And put these guys on the sides. Just like, oh, wait, wait a second. I almost, I almost got ahead of myself there. Oopsie doopsies, you know. 
I bet you guys, I bet, I bet you caught that. I bet you caught that. Close this up and make sure it, it's properly positioned and then squeeze this baby in there. Just like that. So if I had all my fall um, crafting supplies accessible, which I, I have them in my basement and I'm just, at this time, I'm just not gonna go down there and get them. But if I did, I would put something else cute on here, maybe on the inside, something that's not two dimensional, but that would add a little extra fall interest like a leaf shaped button or something like that which i'm sure i have something like that in my stash if you have a big stash of craft supplies i bet you have something or you could cut out an element if you have you know you could shrink down a leaf a leaf shape from this kit just pull out one of those leaves and shrink it down and Put it on the front just a little extra something something would be cute depending on your theme if you're watching this and you're not making it for fall maybe you're making a christmas one a halloween one a birthday you name it you can make it for anything anything at all so there's the envelope make sure you didn't glue it together and then you can fold it this way or this way whatever floats your boat and close it up and that's it next for the maple leaves box card i have my pieces here as well as my pdf document which i usually like to print out but today i am looking at it on my tablet which is kind of nice a little more eco-friendly perhaps and you can see all the pieces for the project. So the envelope is broken up into several parts because the card is pretty large. And then there's the card base, the insert, insert decoration, the label, the back panel, and then the side panels and the front panel. So you can certainly make those out of whatever colors and pattern papers you would like to use. But if you wanna use the same that I've done, that's why I, I listed there what colors and everything that I used. So these are the envelope pieces. We can save those until the end. I've got my label here that I can stamp on and the side pieces. I went ahead and folded where they're scored. There's the side and the back, the front, The front is here, the sides are here, and the front is not folded, but the sides are. So along those score lines, I'm gonna fold those forward, just like that, and that. And the back is also not folded. So here's the insert with its piece here, which will go right on top of it. And these pieces have a little number. Your machine will have cut a little number into each of them. This one says two. This one says one. This one says three. And this one says four. So what I'm going to do is fold these forward
Oops, that was the sound of my baby monitor. I forgot to turn that down. I'm so used to hearing it that I don't even hear it anymore. Okay, so these are both flat. These are folded. I'm going to position them like this. So this will be the front. This is the left side. So if we're looking at the finished card, this is the front here. This is this side here. This is this side here. This is piece number three. And then the back here is this. And this will go in the middle. And then that, it's gonna be pretty easy. So I'm just gonna glue these together side to side first and then I'll glue the panels on. And I'm not gonna glue the panels on super perfectly because I want it to feel pretty natural. So, I can just glue these together like this. So if you wanted to do any edge inking before you put your shapes on, I do have a method for doing that. I like to just take this mini ink pad that I have, it's just a dark brown ink pad, and I have a dauber here. I used to rub the ink pad directly on my shape when I used to use different ink pads, but these are the all the ink pads that I've found are really... Um, just really inky and it's just too much if you do that. So anyway, if you wanted to do that, it is a really nice touch. And you could even fold it and get some ink on that, that cut line there to accentuate it. It doesn't take much. I feel like I have a little more ink on here than I would really like to have. But using like a, a dark mustard, if you have a lot of colors of ink, you can get a little more creative with the colors that you choose. Or if you are just starting out with this technique and you just want to use dark brown, I feel like that generally works pretty well on almost anything and everything. So I will just go ahead and do that to most of these leaves.
So I'm still kind of perfecting this new technique because this is a little different than the ink pads I used to use. I don't know how much I'm really loving that, but it is what it is. It's fine. So maybe I just have too much ink on there, I'm thinking. But it still adds a nice effect, and I think even if it's not exactly the way I want it, personally, to me it does look a little bit better than just being completely plain. So I'm gonna keep it up here and just get a couple of edges with some dark darkness to make them look more dimensional and lifelike. So next I will get ready to glue these on, but I might as well stamp on my shape here, my circle. And I am using the stamps that came with this paper collection. These are the Love You Pumpkin stamp set stamps by Echo Park Paper Company. And I'm gonna use this one that says Welcome Fall, since it's a nice circular design on my circle. It would be nice to color those leaves in with some markers. So I will glue this one onto the front. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of loosely glue it on just like this And it's just kind of, it's a little quote unquote, maybe messy ish, which I like. It makes it feel pretty natural and lifelike to me. I'm not so sure about that inking. I feel like I like I do like this better. When I did the original one, I used more of like a dark orange, a brown, and maybe a dark orange there. It's more of a subtle effect instead of just using dark brown on everything. So it is what it is, as they say. So there's the outside of our card and I'm going to glue this green design onto the brown. And then this goes inside with the back of this is gonna be flush with the back of the card and the back of this will be flush
at the back of the card just like this so it's a little difficult to see but right in there and then this one goes right in there just like that might be easiest to kind of position it and then put some glue on it oopsies so when you're looking down from outside you can see in there and line it up nicely and then same thing here it just butts right up to the back of the card and is hidden behind that part of the design so we can fold it flat to make sure that it's going to lay flat inside its envelope yeah it looks like we're good So there we go. Pretty cool. Again, I do like the inking a little bit better than I did on this one. So, uh, I don't know. They're both cool though. They're both super cool. For the envelope, it's broken down into parts because this card is so large. So this is the bottom flap. This is the top flap. And these are the sides, just like that. So, I will glue them onto the large rectangle, just like this. So this bottom will get glued onto the sides, just like this. And then your card will fit inside with plenty of room. Oopsies, too soon. 
Uh, I'll let that dry and grab the dry one and just carefully slide that inside and close it up. Next for the pumpkin box card, I have my shapes laid out here, except for the envelope, which I have off to the side over here. This is the envelope. Then I have the pieces of the pumpkin here with their, some of the pieces on top of them. So this one is easy to identify. Next, this one, this one with the stem on it. This, I've gone ahead and folded like this. This has this leaf on it, but we are not gonna glue that on just yet. Then this, this piece, and then this with these two on it. So these two look pretty similar, but you can tell which is which by how well this fits on here. So that fits really nicely. If I tried to put it on here, it's just not quite an even border. So this goes here, this goes here. I can go ahead and glue this on, this on and this on, but not this one just yet. So let's do that. I did go ahead and stamp on this label with the stamp set that coordinates with the paper collection that I used, which is the Fall Fever collection by Echo Park Paper Company. I'm going to take this and glue it like this. Then I can glue the back on. Then I'm gonna use, I could just glue this right on here, but I'm gonna use um, some dimensional adhesive to make it stand out from that surface. So my favorite dimensional adhesive is by Thermoweb, and it's called 3D Zots, and they are super sticky. 
and I think I'll put three of them on the back of this. And center that right on there. And set that aside. I will use some of those here. like this and then I will do the same thing here just like that and then I will glue this onto the back like this Just like that and then I will glue this onto the center of my other piece here Just like that and then I will glue this on I'm just gonna glue it right here and leave this like that then when you fold it flat it can lay flat but then when it pops out it's kind of curved forward like this So there it is. So to make the envelope, we're going to fold it like this and glue that bottom flap in place and give it some time to dry before you put your card in. That like this just like that for the pumpkin pie box card I have my pieces here except for the envelope which is here off to the side I've got this insert piece which I folded and then we can glue our whipped cream here on the top. I also have these panels laid out like this and I went ahead and stamped here on that one. And then I have this piece here which just folds here, here, and there. And then this piece which just folds up like this. Pretty easy easy as pie I would say so I'm gonna start by gluing this here like that
then I'll go ahead and glue this here. The nice even border around it. And this. Then I'll glue this right here. and centered with an even border around all four sides. Next I'll glue the whipped cream pieces into place here which goes like this. So Glue that there and this. Oh, you can see where that goes. This one goes here. And this is just going to be loose on the inside. It helps it stand up. This will get glued onto the inside right here, just like that, so that it's centered. And the bottom of it should be flush with the bottom of the crust. So, to close it up, we're going to fold that over and then accordion fold these guys. So that's the card folded up. And when it opens up, the whipped cream goes through that slot and this tucks into the back side, just like this. Oh no, I stamped on the wrong side. Oh man, silly, silly me. I guess that, that could be, that could be the back but I will make a note of that when I edit this in just a minute. So for the envelope, we fold this over and fold that up and glue those together just like that. Okay. 
and your card fits right inside. Just like that. Lastly, for the Scarecrow box card, I have my pieces here. I'm gonna do the face first. This will be going on top of that with these little features on it. And then that face will go here. These side panels will go here. And the back will go here. The little neck scarf, handkerchief, whatever. And then the back, front of the hair, the sides. I've got my envelope off to the side. And then I've got my hat pieces here. So first I'm gonna glue this onto the dark brown. Just like that, <clears throat> just like that and it just matches up perfectly. I probably should have made the, the bottom layer slightly smaller, but it's fine and dandy. Then I can glue the cheeks on. And the eyes and the nose. Okay, next I'm going to take a white gel pen. This one is by Jelly Roll. There's a lot of different brands of these. It's nice for adding a little white touch, such as little dots on some eyes to make it look like a, a reflection, more lifelike, all that good stuff. So I can go ahead and glue that right onto the face. Of my project here. I can glue the hair on. I'm gonna glue this right here. Okay. 
And this can go however you think it looks cute. It's good. I'm gonna do that. And then this back part can go here. So next for these panels, I would like to emboss them to give them a texture, make them look more lifelike. I'm gonna use a burlap looking texture that I have. This one I believe is called burlap. It's by Sizzix by Tim Holtz. And I think any kind of texture is gonna make it have a really similar effect. I apologize in advance for the dirty, dirty state of my embossing machine. It's not super cute, but it is what it is. Um, it's a little dusty and grungy. So I'm gonna put these in there. I don't even care if they're straight. You could make them, you know, kind of diagonal-ish, whatever. And roll it through. So I think there's a newer version of this embossing machine, the Big Shot, the Sizzix Big Shot. I think it's white now, probably a little prettier looking than mine, but mine works great. So that looks cool. I'm gonna glue that on. Same with these sides. Very realistic and lifelike. And glue those into place. right in the center of those areas. Next, I'm gonna fold these over and I'm gonna put the shorter side closer to his face. Sort of like some layers. That's the sound of my brother-in-law watching my daughter. And all of us are sick. Yay. So fun. But not too bad. Hopefully it just goes away soon. Tis the season for getting a cold, right? Is that part of back to school sometimes? We are not in any kind of school, but germs be proliferating, I think, I don't know. So, you know, good times. Oops, I did that the other way. I meant to flip that over, but you know what, does it matter? No, it does not matter at all. So I'll glue the back hair on, just like that. Okay, looking good, buddy. Oh boy. And there, 
there's that. Make sure it closes flat. There we go. Moving right along, looking fantastic. Okay, so now for my hat pieces. These two are the same, and for my original, which looks like this, I embossed the bottom part of both, but I think what I wanna do now is stamp on that, just to sort of show that it could be an area for stamping or writing on, if you wanted. So I'm gonna put that right in the middle. Then if you wanted to write, you know, something on there if you're giving it to someone. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this little hat band on here. Like this. And oh. Then that gets folded that way. It's going to get glued on here like this. So I'm going to do a tad more embossing of this shape below the score line and of those two shapes. So again, I'll get my trusty yet dusty and crusty embossing machine out. And I picked out a leafy embossing folder that I just happened to have. It's called Falling Leaves by Echo Park. And I have a big, um, I, I was very surprised that there aren't any fall leaf themed embossing folders available really anywhere. So, that's, I'm, I don't, I'm still trying to like deal with that because as long as I can remember, there's always been some kind of new fall leaf embossing folder. And you know, that's just the world that I'm used to living in. And I, I don't always get them because I have enough, but maybe that's why they're not making them anymore. Maybe they're taking a break just in general, just not necessarily Echo Park, but just embossing folder companies because maybe everyone has their fill because otherwise I don't know what, what to do if the, I live in a world where there's not new fall leaf embossing folders every year so we'll see we'll see about next year even though I'm all set I have a couple different fall leaf embossing folders so if you want the same effect I think you could use any kind of texture if you have an embossing machine, which I do recommend and I do like using. So I'm gonna glue this other hat band piece on here. Just like this. And glue this on here with a thin border around the top and the sides. And then if this is the front, then I will put this here. And just center it with the same amount of space underneath that panel as there is around the top and the sides, more or less. It doesn't have to be to the micrometer. 
but that looks good. And this can go here. Just like that. I actually redesigned this hat literally like six times, you guys. I'm not sure what was going on. I just couldn't get it to be exactly how I wanted it to look without just redoing it a bunch of times. Sometimes it's just, it's just like that, you know? So this, if you want to kind of scrunch it a little bit, Put that there. Put that there. And then this is going to get glued right onto the inside with the back the back of the tabs flush with the back of the box. So if you could see through, the tab would be right here. You can kind of see in the back, it's gonna be flush with the back of the box, just tucked right in there. Just kind of jammed some glue in there and put that in there too. So you shouldn't be able to see the tab from the outside. And there it is. So when you're ready to fold it flat, just kind of Watch out for those hairs, and then you can fold it flat like this. And it unfolds like that. So there we go. Very cute, love it, love it. Now for the envelope, which looks like this. It goes like this. So, just glue it closed. Call it a day, put the card in there. Super festive and cute. You can fold your card flat carefully. And it's gonna fit in there just right. Lovely. So there you have it, brand new box cards for fall and beyond. I hope you have an awesome time making them. And if you do, you'll have to share a picture with us on social media or on your blog and send it to us somehow. However you like to share, I always love to see and so do the rest of our crafty friends. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time and happy crafting.